Uh, yeah, my name is uh, my name is uh, Piotr Kastschak. I'm working at uh, GWDG. So um, GWDG has a little bit of a difficult name. So we are basically um, yeah a data and uh, IT um, service center for Max Planck Society and um, the University of of Göttingen. Um, Göttingen is in the middle of Germany, and I'm working in the infrastructure group there. And we provide all kinds of uh, infrastructure-related um, services. So that means mostly yeah, virtualization, um, yeah, VM-based virtualization. But um, yeah, now also more and more uh, container-based virtualization uh, based on Kubernetes, um, where we use Rancher as a management platform for the different um, Kubernetes clusters. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, regarding the agenda, um, I will first uh, very shortly um, introduce some uh, basic concepts. Um, then I want to talk a little bit about Rancher, the software that is uh, yeah, in the main focus of this presentation. And then I also want to talk a little bit about the CI CD support in Rancher. Yeah, and finally, I will end the presentation with a very short conclusion. So if there are any questions, uh, yeah, I think I will, we will have in the end like five minutes or 10 minutes for that. So there will be uh, probably enough time to address uh, your questions later. Okay, introduction. So uh, yeah, let's start uh, uh, with the very beginning. So uh, what are containers and why are containers gaining so much uh, popularity and um, attraction? Um, in the last few years. So basically containers uh, allow us uh, or provide us a standard way to package um, applications, uh, but also the configuration of the applications and um, further dependencies into a single object that can then be versioned um, and also then scaled easily and deployed easily into production. Yeah, so basically containers allow us uh, to build applications independent from the environment and then deploy them into uh, into production. And uh, these processes um, that are allowed by, um, by this approach um, are also easily reproducible and enable um, CI, CD and yeah, general agile methods. So what is what is Kubernetes? Um, yeah, probably everybody of you also have heard of um, Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is basically a container orchestration framework uh, that takes care of the um, scaling and failover and uh, load balancing of um, containers. It also provides um, mechanisms for automated deployment and uh, bin packing, and also further aspects uh, that are necessary for yeah, deploying applications into production, um, like for example, the orchestration of storage, but also of, of network uh, resources are also provided by Kubernetes. Um, so here we see um, a very simple architectural overview of how a Kubernetes cluster looks like. Um, basically, we have some uh, master nodes in a Kubernetes cluster and um, yeah, a key value a store called etcd um, that is scalable and redundant uh, where basically the state of the cluster is put into and retrieved and yeah we have the nodes um, on which basically um, the workloads are deployed uh, as containers and uh, where there are also some yeah, infrastructural um, services and containers running uh, that basically take care that um, yeah everything works together. So yeah, Kubernetes and uh, CI/CD pipelines. Yeah, so basically Kubernetes is great as a CI/CD um, platform because it uh, yeah provides uh, the necessary infrastructure to be able to easily deploy um, CI/CD pipelines. So, for example, it's very easy to spin up or destroy containers on demand. Um, Kubernetes uses a declarative approach to 
this, to the description of, of workloads and, re, uh, and resources. And that, of course, uh, makes it very easy uh, to integrate that with the general GitOps uh, workflow, where you uh, uh, use JIT as a version control system um, to basically um, yeah, manage, manage text files and uh, provide versioning um, and later um, an ability to have a single source of truth that can be used as, as a source for, for all further um, deployment steps. And it also provides uh, infrastructure for monitoring, job scheduling, uh, characterizing dependencies between containers uh, and other things that are really very helpful uh, to have on a platform level if one wants to uh, yeah, implement the ICD pipelines. And um, there is a big and fast growing ecosystem of software for CI/CD, like Jenkins X, GitLab, or Tecton. So for Tecton, we will um, hear another presentation today after this one um, that integrate very well and um, are partially also based on um, the functionality that, that Kubernetes uh, provides. Yeah. So then, of course, the question arises of um, yeah, how to um, how to deploy Kubernetes on premise. So Kubernetes is somehow a little bit, or at least in the in the past years, was somehow a little bit notorious for being quite um, quite difficult to deploy, and also later quite difficult to upgrade. So that has changed in the last few years, but nevertheless, um, it's still somehow good to have um, a management framework around Kubernetes so that allows one to deploy Kubernetes cluster very easily and uh, yeah, also manage all kinds of aspects of the life cycle of Kubernetes clusters. And uh, this can exactly be achieved by Rancher. Yeah, so Rancher is an open source software. Uh, it's being very actively developed. Um, it has been bought, I think, one year ago by uh, Zuse. Uh, or at least the, the open source company behind uh, Rancher that is providing most of the developers um, has been bought by Zuse. And um, yeah, Rancher allows uh, to deploy and manage um, Kubernetes clusters on premise, uh, but also in the cloud. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's possible to have um, a multi platform strategy when, uh, where one um, uses Rancher to manage. Uh, on-premise Kubernetes clusters, but also at the same time Kubernetes clusters running, uh, for example, on Google Cloud or, or AWS. Yeah, and use basically one management interface to manage all these clusters. And um, yeah, existing clusters can also be important, uh, imported into Rancher, but then of course some functionalities uh, that Rancher provides um, regarding upgrades and uh, other things are then not available for, um, for these clusters. Yeah, and uh, Rancher scales basically to thousands of uh, managed clusters. Uh, it itself um, runs on, on Kubernetes, so it's possible also to deploy um, Rancher uh, as, as one single Docker container, but for production use and um, if one really wants or needs this kind of scalability to manage, I don't know, hundreds or even maybe uh, thousands of clusters, then of course one needs to um, deploy it in, uh, on Kubernetes in a dedicated cluster. And uh, yeah, Rancher provides automated uh, one-click upgrades of the clusters that are, that are managed by it, and uh, also provides backups and rollbacks. Yeah, so this is also very important for uh, production use if um, upgrade of, of Kubernetes somehow goes um, horribly wrong, then one still has the, um, the ability to go back to the last version. And it yeah, provides a very powerful web UI for management, monitoring, and deployment, and also deployment of workloads um, via Helm charts. And uh, it also provides um, all the things that are basically necessary um, for, for real production deployments, uh, like uh, user management, authentication, and authorization, uh, being able to apply uh, access control and security policies, it even allows um, the partitioning of uh, Kubernetes clusters uh, 
into different uh, projects. So projects are so these projects are um, a rancher concept where multiple namespaces are grouped together and where you can uh, assign basically yeah uh, access control and security policies individually uh, to these different uh, projects uh, inside one Kubernetes cluster. And this is quite helpful as it allows to really partition one Kubernetes cluster for different use cases. And uh, yeah, a Rancher also supports multi-tenancy, so it's possible to um, give uh, also customers access uh, to this uh, to, to the Rancher UI, and then configure it uh, in a way so that the customer can log in and manage um, only the Kubernetes clusters um, that are his or hers. And uh, there is also a good integration with um, other SSO uh, frameworks, uh, like, for example, uh, Keycloak, or integrating it directly with an Active Directory infrastructure um, for user authentication and authorization. And it's also certified and compatible with a very wide selection of uh, software from the cloud native ecosystem, which is also quite nice uh, for production use because there are nice compatibility uh, matrices uh, that define which version of Rancher and which version of Docker and which version of uh, the operating system uh, used are compatible. And uh, this has been tested, uh, and therefore one has um, certainty that uh, it can be used for production uh, use cases. So here uh, we see basically um, a logical view of, of Rancher and the different uh, features it provides. So uh, most of them I already mentioned. Uh, maybe one interesting thing is also the, the app catalog. Um, that um, allows uh, to provide um, yeah, a repository for Helm charts. And it also, yeah, and one, uh, one another uh, in, important aspect is that the Kubernetes clusters deployed by Rancher are still manageable also by um, CubeSet, CTL, um, APIs, and, and CLI. Um, so basically, uh, you are not locked in into some kind of proprietary management uh, system for your Kubernetes clusters, but you can just use the normal, um, yeah, the normal command line uh, utilities um, to, to manage these uh, clusters, the, uh, clusters that you know also from, uh, yeah, from vanilla um, Kubernetes deployments. Exactly. Yeah, so here's, uh, yeah, uh, here are the different uh, platforms also shown that uh, Rancher supports. So one can deploy or integrate um, Kubernetes clusters also from AWS, Microsoft Asia. One can use bare metal uh, deployments, uh, Google Cloud Platform deployments, or for example, VMware and uh, other cloud providers. So Rancher at the GWDG. So we started uh, with Rancher around uh, one year ago. Um, our deployment of Rancher is based on VMware ESX. Uh, so this is uh, a commercial virtualization environment, uh, but we are thinking about moving it to bare metal or our own on-premise um, OpenStack deployment in the future, um, just uh, yeah, due to the high costs of VMware ESX. Uh, so we currently have uh, deployed Rancher uh, with a dedicated or on a dedicated three node um, K three S cluster for scalability. So K three S is basically um, a very reduced Kubernetes distribution that is uh, meant for edge deployments of Kubernetes, but that is also um, yeah very good to use for for Rancher, and it's basically a best practice to use that um, if one wants to have a scalable um, and production ready Rancher deployment. We have also integrated Rancher with uh, with Keycloak uh, for user and group management, which also works very well. So we can basically uh, yeah do the whole group management directly in Keycloak and just link the different groups um, from within Rancher. And we are also utilizing this um, projects functionality of Rancher heavily uh, because that allows us. Um, to reduce the number of Kubernetes clusters that, that we need to deploy. And it's also um, interesting and important for CI CD as it allows 
um, to, for example, have inside one cluster, one environment for uh, for development, one environment for staging, and then one environment for, for production use cases. And we also had very good experiences with uh, major version upgrades. So for example, upgrade uh, from 2.4 uh, to um, 2.5 uh, went without any issues inside of a few minutes. And we also provide uh, our customers direct access to Rensham so they can manage um, their own clusters and deploy workloads uh, into them um, through the Rensham UI, which also works very well. And currently we have uh, 15 Kubernetes clusters deployed with Rensham with more than 100 workers. Uh, but basically it scales um, exponentially. So we get more and more requests for, for Kubernetes clusters. And this is probably also, yeah, nothing new for you. Um, yeah, basically everything uh, will be running on Kubernetes, I think, in a few years. So the ICD support in Rensha. Um, there are some features or some basic features of Rensha that already um, support CI CD. Uh, use cases and and help with the deployment of them. So, for example, the ability to use uh, ma uh, multi-cloud and um, on-premise deployment of Kubernetes clusters at the same time is already quite um, quite useful, uh, as it allows, for example, to run uh, development uh, workloads uh, on-premise and then deploy to public cloud for production or vice versa. Yeah, depending on uh, yeah, on what is more cost effective or how much uh, resource one has um, on premise or can use, uh, yeah, in, in public clouds. And there is also support for projects, uh, what I already mentioned, um, that allows uh, basically to partition a Kubernetes cluster uh, based on uh, namespaces and different uh, access control policies. And then these partitions can, for example, be used uh, to implement dev, stage, and uh, production environments inside one cluster. Uh, so this is also quite, um, yeah, quite useful for CI uh, CD pipelines. And there is also direct integration uh, with some other cloud native software that is used uh, in the context of Kubernetes a lot, like for example Istio, uh, which then allows um, to divert uh, traffic. For um, yeah, for different kinds of um, green blue deployments or canary deployments, or even A/B testing. Um, so it's um, yeah, so it's possible to have some more flexibility in rolling out uh, applications into into production. And uh, yeah, there is also another feature, um, catalog management, uh, that allows easily to deploy and manage uh, Helm charts from within um, Rensham. And this can be used also to um, deploy the basic CI CD infrastructure directly from Rensha, for example, into a dedicated uh, Kubernetes cluster that has also been deployed by Rensha. Yeah, a new feature um, that is explicitly meant for CI CD um, was integrated into Rensha in version um, 2.5. Uh, it basically allows, it's called Fleet, and it basically allows uh, GitOps uh, like CI CD, but at scale. So it's basically meant uh, to be able to roll out um, applications and implement CI CD um, into hundreds or even thousands of clusters. So Rancher claims that this even scales uh, to around 1 million clusters. Yeah. So basically, this is probably not something any, any one of us will use, but uh, yeah, it's nevertheless um, a nice feature. And it uh, supersedes uh, the old uh, Rancher pipelines concept that has been deprecated. And yeah, now basically Fleet is the mechanism that, that should be used for that. And Fleet provides um, or is implemented as um, a set of uh, custom resource definitions um, for Kubernetes and uh, a number of controllers that basically implement the necessary functionality. So, for example, um, there are resource definitions for uh, JIT repositories uh, that then define for Fleet uh, which JIT repository should be monitored for changes. And if changes occurs, then um, the 
defines the ICD pipeline, um, yeah, is started and the changes are deployed automatically by fleet. And uh, yeah, then there is a support for different deployment methods. So for one, um, the usual YAML based um, Kubernetes uh, resource and workload format is, um, is supported directly, but also customize is supported. So this is basically a software um, that um, allows uh, raw Kubernetes YAML to be to be patched for uh, to, to have some kind of possibility to to adapt it to different environments. And these uh, patches are also uh, described in YAML. Um, yeah, which makes that quite convenient. But it's also possible to use Helm charts um, to, to specify the deployments. And these can also be put uh, either in JIT, but uh, it's also possible to do it directly from, uh, from Rancher catalogs. Yeah, here we have basically um, yeah, a visualization of, um, yeah, of the general workflow. Uh, based on JitOps that probably also everybody of you uh, has some experience uh, with, or at least know, knows how it works. So um, yeah, basically pull requests are created for, for JIT, um, which are then applied. And uh, with, the, with the application of, this, uh, of these pull requests, uh, pipelines are started with appropriate hooks. So in this case, Fleet um, monitors um, the JIT repository automatically. And then uh, basically the deployment process is uh, triggered and Fleet then uses um, Kubernetes APIs um, to roll out um, the changes and for example, deploy the uh, newly built uh, containers that have been registered um, yeah, in the in the container registries, and this is shown a little bit uh, more in detail here. So we have basically this uh, this uh, fleet controller cluster uh, that is responsible for monitoring um, the uh, configured JIT repositories. Uh, if it detects any changes, uh, these uh, changes in YAML files or or Helm charts. Um, are imported into fleet, then converted into bundle definitions. So these are also um, custom um, resource definitions. And then in each of the clusters, that is basically the yeah, deployment target for fleet and agent runs that, uh, that pulls the new state and uh, deploys the changes and basically pushes back um, the change status so that uh, the status of the cluster can be monitored uh, by fleet. Yeah, uh, so the conclusion uh, is quite simple in this case. So from our experience, uh, Rancher is really a great uh, platform for the deployment and management um, of Kubernetes cluster on premise. So we do not have any experience yet with uh, using Rancher for uh, managing of Kubernetes clusters in public clouds. Uh, but yeah, it's possible and it might also be interesting in the future for us. Uh, yeah, Rancher provides uh, various features uh, that support uh, CI, CD workloads out of the box. And now since version 2.5 with Fleet, um, there is also a very nice mechanism to, to support the JIT ops, uh, yeah, even at scale with large environments with a lot of clusters. So thank you. Uh, that was the presentation part. Um, let me have a check if there were questions. Has only be a comment. Okay. Regarding fleet. But is there if you have any questions, I mean feel free to post it in the chat any time. Um, I think it was very interesting. Um, so you you did say that there's a lot of requests from the user community to add more. You, you said exponential growth, basically. <laughs> um, yeah. 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 So um, that's that sounds really good. So the pe are people needing kind of extra support 
from GWDG or they know how this works and how are you stimulating basically this kind of community slash ecosystem? Yeah, so, so basically uh, what we did is um, we created a so-called playground Kubernetes cluster uh, where we can um, create these uh, projects. So basically if one user comes to us and says, I want to play around with, with Kubernetes and want to try out things with Rancham, then we just create uh, in this playground Kubernetes cluster one project for him, uh, configure the access and security policies appropriately that uh, he can only access this and then he can just try out things and, and play around and uh, often later the same user comes to us and says yeah i want a real product uh, my, my own kubernetes cluster so that i can deploy my workloads um, into it and then we deploy that and um, configure rencham so that he can see all uh, the, the whole kubernetes cluster and uh, yeah then it goes from there uh, and uh, regarding the, the ex exponential um, rise or uh, in demand for Kubernetes clusters, I think uh, probably everybody has, has noticed that, um, yeah, everything is running now on Kubernetes. Everybody wants to use Kubernetes for, for everything. And um, it basically has huge advantages in comparison to uh, simple virtualization with virtual machines. So uh, basically we are assuming that in a few years, really the majority of workloads um, will use Kubernetes and not um, traditional virtualization based on virtual machines. And uh, yeah, so this is where this exponential growth is coming from. Okay, pretty cool. So then I would say, let's go on with Vishal's presentation.